In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Sundance Photoshop action. This is a stock photo I'll use uh, to demonstrate the effect and uh, the action will basically create this look for us. This is a slightly modified um, look. I've just changed the colours. Uh, though that's basically it. I've just changed the colours so I'll show you how to do all that. Uh, and once we've gone through how to customise the look we're going to take it a step further and I'm going to actually uh, then use another action called Shatter 2 um, to create all these uh, all these parts I've sort of exploded out from him. So I just clicked through a few more um, examples of the Sundance effect. Okay, so I'll close these down and we'll start from scratch. So there's just a few things I need to go through uh, for you to check off just to make sure that uh, you get no errors when you play back the action and you get the best possible result. So firstly, uh, look into your layer panel and your photo layout should look identical to this. It should say background and have that lock symbol and background should be presented in that way, sort of on an angle like that. Uh, okay, so if it's not, so for example, if I open up my photo and it was just called layer one, or something like that, what you need to do is just go to layer, new, background from layer, and it will set it as a background. So you only need to do that step if it doesn't look identical to that when you open up your photo. All right, so uh, still in the layer panel, let's head on up to this top right hand corner icon. Uh, you might not be able to see that, but there's a um, option down the bottom called panel options. Click on that. Um, and right down the bottom here, just ensure add copy to copied layers and groups is ticked. And click OK. Uh, next, just go up to image mode and make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, we'll go to image size. So you can see the size of my photo here, 1700 by 2300. Uh, 300 pixels per inch. Uh, that's a great size to use for this action. Anywhere between say 1500 pixels to 4000 pixels is great. So just avoid, use, uh, just avoid using small photos. Um, you'll get the best results from higher resolution photos. Okay, cancel that. So now what we need to do is load up the brushes that were included uh, in the download. You need to load up these brushes for the action to work. So let's just hit B on the keyboard, get the brushes out. I'm going to right click, and there's my brushes. These are just some standard um, Photoshop brushes. So what I need to do is replace these with the ones that were included in the download. So you go to this um, icon here, and we can go to replace brushes, and just select the Sund Sundance brushes.abr file. Click that, and these are all the brushes here. Okay, so that's that. Um, and also just ensure when you've loaded up your brushes, make sure uh, the opacity of the brushes is at 100%. So I just double click, uh, sorry, just to double check that, just hit B, and um, yeah, just check the opacity at the top here. Because if it's down, say, low like this, uh, the effects will, will appear really opaque, and it might actually run into errors as well, so 100%. Okay. Uh, next, what we need to do is uh, we'll load up the actions panel. So go to Window Actions, and it'll pop up here. Just go to this icon here and go to Load Actions. Select like Sundance or ATN. So that's all ready to go. So there's uh, one more important step that we need to do, and uh, what we need to do firstly is go Layer, New Layer. And this must be called brush, all in lowercase. So B U, uh, sorry B R U S H, all lowercase. Um, if it's not spelt identical to that, then the action won't work at all. Click OK. And so the idea with the brush layer here is that we want to um, select our subject. We want to fill in our subject with a color, and that's going to tell the action, um, you know, the area in our photo where it's going to apply all the effects to and around. So what I need to do, um, I'm lucky here because I've got my subject on a white background, so it'll be easy to select. So I'm just going to select my background layer, I'm going to grab my magic wand tool, I'm just going to click anywhere in the open here, and it hasn't grabbed this bit 
uh, under his arm here. So I'm going to hold down Shift, and that'll add to the selection. Uh, now, currently, if I select my brush layer, and I'll flick this to say black, if I um, hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac, it'll fill that selection with the foreground color here. Um, but you can see that's filled everywhere apart from our subject, so I need to invert this selection. So if I just hold down Control uh, Shift I or Command Shift I, that will invert it. Now I'll fill it, and that's all good. Uh, I won't worry about that little bit on his face, so it shouldn't affect anything. Okay, so this is all ready to go now. Uh, so all you need to do, if you twirl open this action, there it is there, Sundance, you get this little scroll bar. So when I click play, um, you'll get an idea of how uh, much longer the action's got to play back. You see that scroll bar going down there. Uh, but with this action, um, in a few seconds, there's going to be a pop-up where it's going to prompt us to place a shape over our design, and that'll just help um, build up the overall look of the design. So I'll just wait for that pop-up, and yeah, well, here it is now. So uh, you'll get this message, and it'll say, now create a shape over your design using the shape tool. After you've finished positioning the shape, simply click the, the play button in the actions panel to resume the playback of the action. Uh, if you need help with this step, just come back to this tutorial um, and click stop below to proceed. So when you get this pop up, just click stop. Okay, you'll notice that if you look into the actions panel, it's not playing back, everything's stopped. And what we need to do here is place a shape over our design. So here's the shapes here. So if you go to this toolbar, Click on that, you'll see there's some basic shapes here. They're the super, super basic shapes. You can try some of them, but if you go to Custom Shape Tool here, click on that, and look up the top here. Click on this box where it's got Shape, and you'll get more shapes here, okay? Now, if you want to load up all of Photoshop's um, basic shapes, just click on this cog icon, and go to All, and just click Replace, yep and you'll get a lot more shapes that you can play around with there's some sort of there's some cool ornate ones there uh, but if you go if you look online and type you know free photoshop shapes you'll come up with thousands of results um, there is a lot of photoshop shapes out there so just um, do a search download a bunch and then play around with them with this action because you can come up with some really cool um, different designs based on the shape that you choose so i'm just going to load up um, one that i just downloaded so it'll appear down the bottom here, just some stars. So I'm just going to select one, and I'm just going to drag that shape out of my design, just like that. And that's all you need to do, okay? So don't click around in the layer panel here. All you need to do is once you've placed the shape, is just click play on the action, and then it will resume, okay? So it's got about another minute or so to play back, so I'm just going to um, skip the, uh, the, video, the video for to get to the result and then we're going to go through all the ways to customize this action talk about each layer and what it does okay so we'll wait for the um, action to finish all right so the action's finished playing back and this is uh, the default look of the action so they're the colors you'll get but it's really simple to change all that I'll show you in a sec uh, another thing to note about this action is that every time you play it uh, you know the the textures, uh, the fire, all that's going to be randomized, so you'll get a different result every time you play the action. So if you want to go for a different um, variation, just play the action again. So I'll just collapse this, and we'll go into the layer panel now. So first thing you want to do is uh, collapse all these folders, just so everything's neat. So with the Sundance folder that should already be selected, just hold down Control alt or Command Option on a Mac, click on it and everything is now collapsed, so good to go there. I've kept the brush layer on up the top here, so if I turn that on, you can see that there. That's just handy if you want to run the action again. All you need to do is shift select these two folders, delete them, and then play the action again. So that's that. I'll come back to the adjustments folder. Uh, we'll go into straight into this, and we'll start from the top. And most importantly is this layer here, Reveal Normal Photo, and I've got in brackets Brush Mask. So what you might notice is when you play the action, there might be a whole heap of fire over your subject's face, so an area that you want to be cleared up um, isn't clear because of all the design elements over it. So this is where this uh, layer is really good. Currently, 
it's hidden by this layer mask. So you can see when you've got a, um, a layer mask and it's filled in black, it means it won't be visible. If I, if I invert this layer mask to white, it's completely visible. And all that layer is, it's a cutout of our, um, our brushed area. And it's put on top here above all the other design elements. So um, wherever I brush onto, if I brush white onto this layer mask, it's going to override everything else. It's going to make this layer appear most prominent. So if I hit B, I'll right click, and if I scroll the top, um, with each one of uh, my actions where you need to use brushes, I always include a soft brush in the top left hand corner, just a quick access to a soft brush, so just, I'll grab that. I'm going to flip this over to white. Now if I brush in this mask, I can clear up his face, um, a bit around the basketball there. That's probably all I need to, all I need to do. Okay, so that's very important. So when you run the action, you want to jump to that layer straight away, jump into the mask, grab a white brush, and clean up the areas that you want to be um, really visible. All right, let's go on down here. So this folder here glows. I'll turn this one on and off. So you can see what that's doing when I turn it on and off. There's two glows inside here. Got glows one, glows two. So this top one here, if I move this around, you'll see it's just these um, blue little glows. Now there, the position of those are completely randomized uh, when you run the action every time. So they'll be in a different position. Uh, but this layer here, G1 color, uh, glows one color. If you double click on this, you can just play around with this hue, this hue slider here and it'll actually just quickly change the color of those glows. Um, so we're going to go for a red theme here. So I'm just going to change it to red. Um, Glow 2, I'm going to check out, uh, make that more of a red. If you want the glows to appear uh, much more prominent, just select the folder, hit Control J or Command J to duplicate it, and that will just increase its overall intensity. You can, you can, of course, go inside there and move those layers around if you want. Flames, um, yep, that's those. So if you go inside here, uh, there's three different main layers that help build up the look. Uh, flame fill one, two, and three. And you'll see I've got a, sh a, a color layer above it, solid fill color layer, and that will affect the color. So uh, these bottom two are the ones that um, basically dictate the color. This one here, I'll show what it does in a sec, but if I wanted to change this to a blue, I'll just double click on that. Blue, but you can see how it's combining blue with red at the moment, so it's basically become a white. But if I change this to a blue, you'll see the flames change over to blue. And this one here, if you double click on this and you know bring this down, make it darker, you'll see as I make it darker what it's doing to the flame. I make it lighter. So play around with that, it's basically um, to increase the overall intensity uh, of the flame. Cancel that. I'm going to change these back to uh, it's more of a red. I'll try this more of a yellow or red. Like that. That'll do. Um, now, if you want to play around with the flames a bit more, um, say if I, if I wanted uh, more flames around, say he's. Uh, torso here. I could duplicate this entire folder. Okay, so I've got a whole heap more flames. It's really intense. Um, I could move this entire folder around just like that. I can move some down here over his waist, like that. But I don't want all this other, all these other flames here. So what I'm going to do? I'm use this mask. I'm going to select this mask. Control I, Command I to invert it. It'll flip it to black. So now I can grab my white brush and just reveal where I wanted this, uh, the layers inside this folder to appear. So I just brush over his waist there. So I've just added more flames there. So that's a quick way to, you know, um, to add more flames where you want. Uh, I'll turn it off. Okay, photo. That's just basically got our main photo in it. That's little parts appearing there uh, because of where we brushed our original photo in at the top. So combine those two together. So I've gone inside here, so it's just a couple of layers. Uh, we've got this photo contrast and 
photo color tint. These are just subtle um, adjustment layers that will affect the appearance of the um, of your photo. Just help it sort of connect a bit better with the background elements. Uh, you don't really need to worry about these two layers. Uh, this one here, Photo Edge Outline. If I turn that one on and off, uh, you'll notice that when you run the action, you get a, a little white, uh, sorry, a little line uh, that runs around the edges of where you brushed. It has a little glow on it as well. You can turn that one on and off. I'll leave it on for this. And if you want to change the color, you can just hit Control or Command U and just play around with this hue slider here. Okay. Grunge textures, if I turn this off, you'll see that basically just leaves our design with the flames and the shape that we created. Uh, but if you turn it on, you get all these other textures in the background. So I'll go inside here. We've got these here, five different textures. You can color them all individually, or you can just use this one here, randomized textures color. If I double click on this, again, you can just use this hue slider to quickly change um, the color of all the textures. We're going for a red theme, so I'm just going to make it red. And you don't have to use all these textures as well. You can turn them off one by one. Okay, so I can turn that one on. That looks pretty cool. Or you might turn this one on. Um, you can move them around as well, don't forget. So I can drag this one out to the side. That's a pretty cool texture. Um, but I'll just leave it back where it was. Just turn all these back on. And another thing I like to do is I like to duplicate the, the textures folder. Okay, and then I'll look around the design. Um, I don't want to use it at its full, well, the, basically the way it is. I want to control um, where uh, these extra textures appear. So same deal, I'm just going to invert that mask. Grab my white brush and I can just brush on where I want the elements in that folder to appear. So, a bit more up here. Okay, actually I might erase it from there. Alright, so it's going down. Uh, change shapes color. If I double click on this one here, you can play around with the shoe slider and it will change up the color of the shape that you created. I think the standard color looks pretty good. If we go inside the shapes folder, if I turn this on and off, you can see there's our shape. Go inside here, you've got these uh, these top two layers, so I'll turn them off. Uh, so basically, when you drag out the shape, I do a bit of work with it to um, add some extra elements around it, and those elements are based on um, the shape you create. So you can uh, you can do things like you know I can zoom out a bit, Control T to scale that up, make that bigger, and you know I could I could blur it. I can filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and play around uh, with blurring it like that. Okay, uh, and main shape here. If you turn that off, that's basically yeah that's the main shape that you created. Uh, if you want to get crazy with the shapes, again, just duplicate the folder. So you've got a copy. Um, I could flatten that, Control E. So it's just on one layer. And zoom out, Control T, make it smaller. That, you could drag that down. I'm going to use foot there. Uh, just like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, texture backing plate. I'll just turn it off for a sec. So this basically works if you want to use the design on a lighter color background. So if I, this is the background um, color layer here. So if you want to use, say, like a, a like a light blue. Uh, if I turn this um, texture backing plate off. You see how it sort of blows out the flames a lot more. So what this layer does, it helps to control um, the visibility or the it preserves the, the correct appearance of all the uh, design elements. 
because all these um, these folders and layers have different blend modes, they're designed to work really well on dark colored backgrounds, all those blend modes. So basically what this layer does, it if I move it to the side, takes a snapshot of all the of the design elements, fills it black, so it's got a black backing um, for everything. So yeah, it just helps to preserve the appearance. Uh, but if you, let's change this back to black. If you want to export with a transparent background, all you need to do is turn these bottom two layers off, like that, and now you can save that out as a PNG file and just drag that on top of uh, your work. Okay, so back up the top here. Overall contrast. If you just click on this word opacity, and drag to the left, that'll bring it to 100%, and you drag it to the right. Oh, sorry, 0%. That'll bring. So I'll start again. Clicking that word opacity, drag to the left, that's 0%, drag to the right, that's 100%. So you can play around with that. You can see it makes a pretty dramatic difference. So you want to fine tune the overall contrast if you design. And uh, this one here, overall color tint, it's very subtle, but if you, um, you can play around with this density handle here. You can see as I drag that up, it is changing the color. You sort of just scroll through these here and apply different color tints, uh, but you best to probably control the colors through or through the methods that I demonstrated before. Uh, and I've just included two color options. The first one uh, is on by default, and it's just a, a bluish one if you want to quickly switch to that. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back to that. Uh, this I might actually... Turn it up a bit. Okay, that's all there is to it. Really simple uh, action to use. It's really fun. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to combine this with another action just to show you how easy uh, that is. So what I'm going to do is firstly, uh, I'm wanting, I want to flatten this design onto one layer. So I'm just going to select my adjustments folder, shift select my background layer, control E or command E that'll merge it onto one layer and uh, it's a bonus because I've actually already got my brush layer still hanging around so that's going to come in handy now I've got to run this action this next one so uh, what I need to do I've got my shadow 2 action already loaded okay uh, what I need to do is load up the brushes so I'll right click I'm going to load brushes um, and shadow two. I'm just going to let my shadow two brushes. They will appear at the bottom here. Now I've made a separate um, tutorial, obviously for shadow two. So if you want to know how that works, just load up the tutorial and um, go from here, go from there. But I'm just going to show you, just demonstrate how you combine um, two actions together. So that's actually all ready to go now. Um, so I can just click play on this. And you can see the action is starting to break everything apart. And um, I will wait for this action to complete because it should only take about, uh, hopefully about 30 seconds and then we'll do some customizations to it. But if, like I said, if you want to um, see me go into real in depth tutorial uh, with a shadow 2 action um, yeah check out the video tutorial there all right the action is finished and so there's some obvious obvious things we need to clean up here you can see there's some shadow parts over his eye so we can't really see what's going on there so let's go inside the shadow 2 folder and basically with every action I like to include some uh, you know some overall contrast and color adjustments, but because I'm, I was pretty happy with the way it was before in the action, I'm just going to turn off the overall saturation and contrast here. Okay, um, and what I want to do is invert, so I've got this layer here again, reveal normal photo, so if I'm just going to invert this mask here, so it's just going to reveal um, our original brushed area from, from our original design here. Okay. And, you know, just looking at that, there's not really much I need to do. It's, um, it's, 
it'll, every time we run the Shadow 2 action, the variation of all the, um, there'll be a different variation of all the parts, so I actually like this variation, um, it fits well with, with the design. Uh, you know, I could go around and play around with the, with the glass layers here, I can move them around if I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted to have this like a dispersion effect, like he's um, he's flying in from the left to the right, I could select my glass folder and move that all over to the left, like that. And I could you know play around. Maybe there's too many parts. I could turn some off, like that maybe. But I actually liked it, um, just like that, sort of spread out everywhere. Okay, so. That's how simple it is to combine multiple actions and you know you can come up with a design like that in literally under 10 minutes when you get the hang of how to use these actions. Uh, so yeah, I hope you have, have fun using them and uh, if you've got any, any questions or need help just uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll assist. Thanks.